geometric proof, which is a two-column proof. We're at Lesson 2.6a. There's seven previous videos for Chapter 2 that are linked in the description in the Geometry Playlist. When writing a geometric proof, we use deductive reasoning to make a chain of logical steps that move from the hypothesis to the conclusion of the conjecture we're proving. And by proving that the conclusion is true, we've proven that the original conjecture is true. Here I have a flow chart that shows what's going to happen. We have our hypothesis, and that'll lead us to information in the given, definitions, properties, postulates, and theorems, and those will lead us to the conclusion. When writing a proof, it's important to justify each logical step with a reason. We need to be precise and logical. We can use symbols and abbreviations, but they must be clear enough so anyone who reads our proof will understand them. We can write a justification for each step. Here we've got six steps, six statements, and we've got six justifications. Our given says angle A and angle B are complementary and that angle A is congruent to angle C. Our first statement is angle A and angle B are complementary. That was given. Our second statement is the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 90 degrees. Well, if you remember what complementary angles are, they're two angles that together will total 90 degrees. So this statement is the definition of complementary angles. Now, if you look at my abbreviations, I didn't have to write the whole thing out in longhand. I just said def period of comp period and then our angle symbol with an S definition of complementary angles. Our third statement is angle A is congruent to angle C. That's our given. That's the second part of our given, isn't it? Our fourth statement is the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle C. Now how did I get that? Well, angle A is congruent to angle C and the definition of congruent angles is that they're equal to each other. So that's our justification. Our fifth statement is the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B equals 90 degrees. How did I get that? Well, this is the substitution property of equality. If A plus B is 90 degrees and A and C are equal to each other, then C plus B is going to equal 90 degrees. So we substituted the measure of angle C into this from measure of angle A. See, we just put C in its place, that was the substitution, and it was based on steps two and four. Our final statement, number six, is angle C and angle B are complementary. Our justification is the definition of complementary angles. Now, it's important, if you look at number five, I wrote steps two and four here. When a justification is based on more than the previous step, we can note this after the reason, like I did, I put steps two and four. The justification for step five was based on steps two and steps four. So normally, our justification is based on the previous statement, see? But this one was based on two previous ones, okay? A theorem is any statement that we can prove. And once we have proven a theorem, we can use it as a reason in later proofs. So little yellow hand means you should probably write this down. We've got a theorem, a hypothesis, and a conclusion. This is theorem 2.6.1. That means chapter 2, lesson 6, our first theorem. It's the linear pair theorem. And it says if two angles form a linear pair, then they're supplementary. Our hypothesis is angle A and angle B form a linear pair. So our conclusion is that angle A and angle B are supplementary. The theorem tells us that. We have another theorem. This is 2.6.2. It's the congruent supplements theorem. And it says, if two angles are supplementary to the same angle or to two congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. Our hypothesis is angle one and angle two are supplementary. Angle two and angle three are supplementary. So that means our conclusion is that angle one and angle three must be supplementary. Okay? So, it's really important that you have these at your fingertips in your notes because you're going to use these a lot in these two column proofs, all right? A geometric proof begins with given and proved statements which restate the hypothesis and conclusion of the conjecture. In a two column proof, we list the steps of the proof in the left column, we write the matching reason or justification for each step in the right column. And we never assume when we're doing a proof, we always prove 
okay? So here, if you notice this drawing over here, we've got point A, B, and C. This makes a straight angle, doesn't it? This would be, B would be the vertex, but we've also got angle one and angle two, don't we? So we can complete a two column proof of the linear pair theorem. So remember the linear pair says, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So our given is angle one and angle two form a linear pair. They're supplementary. They make 180 degrees together, don't they? That's our given. We need to prove that angle one and angle two are supplementary. So here is our two column proof. We got our statements on the left, our reasons or justifications on the right. We've got our first statement, which is angle one and angle two form a linear pair. We got that from our given. And a lot of times the first statement is the given. Not always, but a lot of times. Our second statement is ray BA and BC form a line. Well, let's take a look. Ray BA and BC form a line. Yeah, they do. That's the definition of a linear pair. That's our reason. Our third statement is the measure of angle ABC equals 180 degrees. So if this is the vertex and this is angle ABC, it does measure 180 degrees. That's the definition of a straight angle. That's our justification for number three. Number four says measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals the measure of angle ABC. So angle one and angle two equals the measure of this straight angle ABC. And our justification is the angle addition postulate. So hopefully you wrote that down and we talked about that in the previous video. Our fifth statement is measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. Our justification, our reason is substitution from steps three and four. Our sixth statement is angle one and angle two are supplementary. Our reason is the definition of supplementary angles. So we started up here and we slowly, using logic precisely, it got us down to here, which was what we were supposed to prove, okay? So we went from here to here using these definitions and postulates, okay, and properties. So the reason must match the statement it's aligned with. And before we start writing a proof, we should plan out our logic. Sometimes we'll be given a plan for a more challenging proof, and this plan will detail the major steps of the proof for us. Here we have another theorem. It's 2.6.3. It's the right angle congruence theorem, and it says all right angles are congruent. That makes sense. And the hypothesis says angle A and angle B are right angles, so our conclusion is that angle A is congruent to angle B, and that makes sense. Here's another theorem. It's 2.6.4. It's the congruent complements theorem. If two angles are complementary to the same angle, so remember that means they equal 90 degrees, or to two congruent angles, then the two angles are congruent. Our hypothesis, angle one and angle two are complementary. That means they total 90 degrees. Angle two and angle three are complementary. Our conclusion is that angle one is congruent to angle three. If these two are complementary, so let's say this is 40 degrees and that's 50 degrees, and angle two and angle three are complementary, so we know that's 50, then that's got to be 40. So angle one and angle three have got to be congruent, see? So there's four parts of a two-column proof. Actually, I'd say there's five if you count the diagram. We've got our given, our prove, our statements, and our reasons. We've got our given, our prove, our statements, and our reasons. But we also have a diagram, okay? We'll talk about that in a little bit more in a second. We can write a two-column proof of the right angle congruence theorem from a given plan. So remember the right angle congruence theorem says all right angles are congruent. So we have this drawing here. We have two right angles, angle one and angle two. And our given is that angle one and angle two are right angles. We need to prove that angle one is congruent to angle two. So here's the plan that was given to us. We're gonna use the definition of a right angle to write the measure of each angle, then use the transitive property and the definition of congruent angles. So you remember what transitive property is? If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. It's sort of like what we did here, okay? 
So here's our proof. We've got four statements and four reasons. Our first statement is angle one and angle two are right angles. We got that from our given, okay? Our second statement is the measure of angle one equals 90 degrees and the measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. Well, that's the definition of a right angle. That's our reason. Our third statement, measure of angle one equals measure of angle two. That's the transitive property of equality. Our statement four is our prove. If you look, angle one is congruent to angle two. That's our prove, isn't it? Our reasoning is the definition of congruent angles. And see my abbreviations? Definition of right angle, transitive property of equality, definition of congruent angles. If a diagram for a proof is not given, we can draw our own and mark the given information on it. Only use the information from the given, not the proof. So if there is no diagram, you use the information from the given to draw the diagram, not the proof, okay? So here's the proof process. One, write the conjecture to be proven. Two, draw a diagram to represent the hypothesis of the conjecture. Three, state the given information and mark it on the diagram. Four, state the conclusion of the conjecture in terms of the diagram. Five, plan the argument and prove the conjecture with information in the given, definitions, properties, postulates, and theorems. And remember, we can write a definition as a conditional statement, you know, with a hypothesis and conclusion, to use it as justification in the order we need to apply it. So we learned that we could write a definition as a conditional statement in the previous video, didn't we? And sometimes we can design our plan backwards, starting from the prove if we can't connect it forwards. So if you're having a hard time when you're doing a proof, and you've got your given and your proof, and you can't figure out logically how to get from one to four, or however many numbers there are, try starting at the proof, at the last one, and finding its justification and then working backwards. Sometimes you can work forwards, then backwards, then forwards, then backwards, until you get the middle parts that are important, okay? Our next lesson is design plans for proofs. It's lesson 2.6b. For those of you who need more help figuring out how to do these two column proofs, we'll break it down a little bit more and talk about it more, all right? And how to do the plans for them. I hope you're having a great day. I'm really proud of you for watching these math videos, boy. And I'll see you next time. Bye.